how can robots help usher in an era of abundance in shelter? Some of the most exciting innovations are those which draw inspiration from nature and ancient technologies that humanity has used for centuries. Today we get to look at a company called Muddy Robots, founded by Professor Ronald Real. You may recognize him from some of my earlier Emerging Objects videos. Now they're back with a machine from 20 additive manufacturing. My name is Jared Gross, your host at Automate Construction. Let's get to it. There's a lot of mosquitoes out here, so mind the, don't mind the swatting. There's a Nubian bolt being printed behind us, which is a really cool structure where the printer prints on a non-planar axis, creating a volt pattern like you can see on an angle all the way up until you have a shelter, which is really dynamic and strong and compressive strength. The strong suit of this Adobe material that it's being printed in, it's a locally sourced clay dug right up here and they're able to print it out by mixing it with water and straw and it's the same printer that's used for concrete so a system like this is much more environmentally friendly and since you're sourcing all the materials locally it's much easier to get started. We're going to talk to the professor today about emerging objects, their progress, what's changed with the new system and what they're looking forward to in the future. So we're here in La Florida, Colorado. My name is Ronald Rail. I am co-founder of Emerging Object. I think it's interesting that the 3D printing industry uses what might be some of the most advanced methods of construction there is. But yet, relative to materials, we've stepped back in time only so far as to use the material of concrete, which has demonstrated to have enormous damage on the environment in the last 150 years. So I'm stepping back a little bit further. I'm stepping back 10,000 years to think about how we can use this material that has zero carbon emissions to think about how we build buildings of the future using two of the most advanced methods of construction, earthen architecture and additive manufacturing. Unfortunately, this was my first time using a new microphone and the mics are great, but my Bluetooth connection wasn't hooked up in this moment. Ronald's story is incredible. He actually grew up in this house on the same property he's printing on now. It's the same piece of land that I filmed my other videos with him years ago. And this house was built with the traditional methodology of Adobe. So no robots. It's been around for a very long time and with just a little bit of maintenance, it's easy to keep it looking like this in top condition. We'll hear more from Ronald later and get a tour of his completed structures. He's a really hardworking guy, Berkeley professor, and on his summers, he's out here pushing the Muddy Robots vision forward. He's digging out just plain old dirt that's getting mixed into the 20 additive manufacturing mixing system. I believe it's very similar to the mixing system they would use for concrete, but in this case, they can just dig it out, reuse it, not nearly the amount of concern you need to have for the permanence of concrete. For their startup process, instead of wasting material, they just move the printer directly over the mixer and start pumping right into the mixer before they get going. One important thing to note is that they do still use a rotor stator in order to keep the material mixture homogeneous. Once they're happy with the consistency and flow of the material, they're able to start the print. And Ronald has trained a student named Barack to operate the printer. They're operating as a two-man team with Ronald at the mixer pump station, I would argue the more physically demanding job, and Barack operating the system from the pendant. This is a six axis robotic arm mounted onto a seventh axis rail system on a trailer, so it's super mobile. They're able to start the print back up from where they left off. As you can see, each piece kind of looks a little bit haphazard, and the extended arm leads to a little bit of vibration in the nozzle, but given the pattern that they selected, it leads to this incredible cob shape and the texture looks very uniform, especially from a distance. You can tell pretty clearly which are the new layers from today, which are darker, which are the fresh layers being printed now that are more wet, and the lighter colored layers from yesterday. They're printed right on the dirt over a thin layer of gravel during the print, they realized they actually wanted to make a slight calibration adjustment based on the model in the slicer, and they were able to do this impromptu, scooping up the last piece of dirt, dumping it right back in the mixer, and in no time, they're back to the races. It's really low stress because no matter what happens, it's just a little bit of dirt. And what's the cleanup process like? Well, right now, all we're gonna do is turn off the machine 
and um, we might put a little bit of water in there to seal it off, but we'll be able to start up in a couple hours and there's nothing that we need to do to clean the machines or anything. This could stay overnight. This could stay for several days in the hose without drying. Wow, it's incredible. Yeah. Hello, my name is Barak Darwish. I'm from Kuwait. Um, I'm currently a PhD student at UC Berkeley um, in the architecture department. I specialize in robotic fabrication and computational design. Um, I came to Berkeley in 2016 uh, specifically to work with Ronald Rael. Um, I started working at his print farm where um, his practice emerging objects focuses on uh, developments in software and hardware for 3D printing, uh, exploring different kinds of materials and uh, basically trying to push the limits and boundaries of 3D printing, um, creating objects of different scales. As you can see, this, this structure that we're building right now utilizes the additional axes of the robot. And the reason why is because the, the, the nozzle can tilt and rather than dispensing materials um, in a vertical orientation, we tilt the nozzle to uh, always be aligned with the normals of the surface. And um, since uh, we had this setup, um, we thought there should be a print where we utilize or maximize the potential of using a six axis and that's a robotic arm. The a setup that is capable of working in any environment, as you can see, the electricity is from a generator, the pump is also gas powered. So the nice thing about the system is its ability to, to go to whatever site and just construct something. And how do you foresee using the skills you're developing in the future? Ah, this is a very difficult question. Um, I guess the field of, of uh, automating construction is growing everywhere. Um, and a lot of the roles of designers and architects are kind of changing, or not necessarily changing, but adapting new skills and tool sets. So I see the robot or machines in general, just an extra tool that we could use for uh, materializing ideas and bringing designs um, to, to reality. The first experiment we did in multicellular construction, in other words, uh, a building that has rooms. And again, it's an experiment in earthen construction. It has two layers of walls made of earth that are about an inch and a half thick. So it demonstrates the strength of the material. And it also it looks at how well this material weathers. Um, so now we're in our fourth year and we can come inside and see. We've, all of the earth came from the site, just uh, in the field there. So during COVID, I'd go for long walks along these roads on the, along the ranch and I'd pick, up a do uh, I'd pick up aluminum cans along the way. And so these handles to the door, the process by which they were made is I 3D printed the handle out of plastic. I embedded it in Adobe. I let it dry. Then I put that Adobe brick in the mud oven and vaporized that plastic. And then I poured in melted aluminum from those aluminum cans. And so that's what the handles are. All the wood is beetle killed pine. Have you done any maintenance to the uh, finish since the four years? No, there hasn't been any maintenance done to the finish. And so you can see some erosion and I haven't been in here for a while, but it's great to be back in here because it's so beautiful the way it frames the sky. Of course, there was a room with a fireplace. It's all ready to make a fire. There was a place for a bed. We can just see the bed platform there. And then a space for a bath. And you can see the river next door. And then there's a beautiful view that's framed through that window. So it's kind of really rustic in a way, but it's just experimental. I'm using this ranch as a laboratory for experimenting with this method to make a series of case studies to demonstrate what can be possible. Emerging objects has always been a studio of inventiveness. We've invented materials, 3D printed salt, 3D printed cement. We've invented software like Potterware, which is used in high schools and universities all over the world now. And we've invented companies like Forest, which was a 3D printed wood company that's now run by Desktop Metal that uses sawdust for 3D printing. So the new venture is called Muddy Robots. And I'm going to lead Muddy Robots in a direction towards 
3D printed architecture made out of this traditional material of Adobe. And so the website's actually live, muddyrobots.com. And we're gonna begin looking at ways that architecture can use the land to build, but also preserve and improve land. And that's a real goal of Muddy Robots. How can we build responsibly? Not only thinking about the building and the people who live in it, but build responsibly in relationship to the land itself. And so it's gonna be a company that looks at this very symbiotic relationship between the ground we walk upon and the buildings we live in.